What's up everybody? Welcome to this new section in which I will receive letters from you, read them out and give my two cents about it. If you find value in this video, please subscribe to my channel and if you do have your own story that you like me to take a look and do some uh, mindful advices on the go, I am all about it. I'm looking forward to hearing from you and if you have any questions, any comments, you can also drop in the section below. Just so you have some idea, I received this letter from a 29 year old female who is a barista in a metropolitan city. So busy work, uh, she's living by herself and she just sent me this message. Hello, uh, we haven't met in person, but I have been following your work for a while now. And I find myself resonating with some of the approaches that you bring to mindfulness and life's challenges. I appreciate that, very nice. I'm reaching out because frankly, I'm at a little bit of a crossroad in my life and I could use some of the outsider perspective, especially from someone with uh, your insight. I appreciate that. So work has become a source of constant stress. I was recently promoted. A role I thought I wanted, but it turned out to be overwhelming. Longer hours and the politics at the work environment are starting to take their toll and I find myself questioning whether this is really the path I want to continue on. Then there's my relationship with, let's say, Adam. I'm making up the name. I have been to get, we have been together for several years, but recently things have been strained. Our conversations have dwindled to either small talk or mostly disagreements. I am finding it hard to remember the last time we genuinely connected and I am worried about where we are headed. On a more personal note, I have been struggling with my sense of self. I mean, this is very common normally. Once a part of your life starts to show some problems, then you take a step back and then you look at the general overview of life and it's like ah oh, it's just not one thing it's it's all the other things that are all the problems but let's see where we go from here on a personal note i've been struggling with sense of self it feels like i'm constantly comparing myself to others which i know is unhealthy my sister is about to get married get married who is about three years older than me this also brings a lot of questions in me the constant self-doubt is exhausting and I often feel lost, unsure and uncertain about who I am or what I really truly want from life. In an attempt to find some solace, I have started painting again, which is a hobby that I used to love. It's one of the few things that brings me peace, yet I can't shake the feeling of guilt for taking this time for myself when there seems to be an endless list of more productive tasks at hand. Okay. Uh, back to my sister. My sister is getting married soon and instead of joy, this event is bringing to the surface the long-standing family tensions. I am caught in the middle trying to ensure my sister has the wedding she dreams of while navigating the silent warfare between our parents and my internal dialogue. I realize this is a lot to share with a stranger. I'm not a stranger. I'm basically, uh, I'm a very familiar person to the struggles of the heart, but that's how she put it. I realize this is a lot to share with a stranger, but your thoughts and advice would mean a lot to me. I'm seeking not just solutions, but perhaps a way to see the challenges from a different idea, uh, a, another perspective that might offer a glimmer of hope or a path forward. Thank you for taking time to read this. Even writing this has meant somewhat therapeutic to me. Looking forward to hearing from you. Sincerely and the name. All right, let's hit the road. Let's let's digest this and let's see where this goes. I mean, honestly, I do want to say a name. So let's say Emma. Emma, first and foremost, you are not alone. You are not alone in the sense that once we go through uh, some certain issues in our lives, we have to take a step back and look at the other things because you are having a hard time at work and then you want to take a step back and it's like, okay, I'm having a hard time at work. What else 
what other kind of support do I have in my life and then you lean towards the other supports and all of a sudden you notice that the other supports are not as supportive as you thought they would be either so with your work with your relationship they are all good matters we can always touch on those but first and foremost it comes to the relationship to the self your relationship to yourself is the determining factor of all the other relationships you have because the only constant in like in your work in your family and in your intimate relationship the only person who is always there is still you and you are having these different variety of problems first and foremost you did such do something good you try to go back to the things that you like and then you picked up painting but then you can't even do that because now you are feeling guilty about not being productive so this tells me that this tells me that the authority figure in your life is is ambiguous the authority figure so we always have to have an authority a place of authority in our mind to make judgments to make decisions in the in the beginning early on this authority figure is your parents you try to uh, do the things you try to take actions according to their preferences and what they will reward and what they will approve later on this becomes the social environment your school teachers or your peers and then as life goes by the biggest authority figure becomes something very ambiguous the others the society the expectations of those who doesn't even exist so somehow some way i really advise you to sit down with yourself and look at all the beliefs that you are carrying somehow some way you believed or you were programmed to believe that you have to be productive you have to go and work you have to do all the things that some part of your brain has programmed or has believed that you have to be doing in order to be a healthy successful uh, productive human being but what it shows me that your criteria for your own health for your own success is not set in stone you have to really sit down with yourself and see what is going to make me happy not just painting but in life what is a healthy worth living life is it working is it having meaningful relationships with family and friends is it becoming a good partner to your partner these are all the things and maybe I am going into a little bit of a dangerous waters but this is what I believe you do have to sit down and see why do I feel like I have to work in order to be a worthwhile person you know okay we are in the United States you do have to make a living you do have to make sure that you are taking care of yourself but in the meanwhile what is it that you want from life if you just want to paint you can if you just want to be uh, a mother you can if you just want to be the best worker I mean uh, in the beginning you were a barista and you got a promotion I don't know if you got the promotion within the same company you were at a manager maybe I I don't have clarity on that but I'm just gonna assume that you were the barista and now you became the manager now you have more responsibilities at work now you have more things to juggle with and it might not necessarily make you happy obviously it didn't make you happy so it was a good uh, this was a good experience because it's always helpful to try things and know whether they are good for you or not but the long story short between your sister's marriage of course you have to feel like joyful and this and that but I really applaud you for the awareness that you are bringing to the surface that hey like deep down this is making me itch a little bit so my advice to you is to sit down with yourself 
and then write out or think out however however that works the best for you who you have been you have been a daughter you have been a sister you have been a girlfriend you have been a worker write out all the roles in your life that you have played so far and what worked what didn't work secondly when you are doing this the most important thing is your honesty and your sincerity to yourself what really makes you happy might not be the things that you are programmed to think right now for example I might be thinking that oh I just have to buy a Lambo and get a 20 year 20 room mansion and make the 500 million dollars but then once you make it it might not be what sh what's going to make you happy and maybe all these materialistic ideas as in this example have been just implanted in your brain with no scrutiny from your own side so please take a moment to sit down and make a personal inventory of who you have been why you have been that way and whether it really works for you or not this is gonna take a while it's gonna be it's gonna be a demanding work but as a beautiful person that I follow he, he passed but Jim Rohn as he says you have to work on yourself harder than you are working on your job so this is your job to know who you are in order to know who you are you have to know who you have been and then negate from that point I have been this person I do not want to be that person so scratch I have been this person I do not want to be that person so scratch I have been this person and I enjoy being that person so work on it develop it you have to create a a personal philosophy you have to make your own tenets of life this is who I am this is who I have been and this is who I want to be and how do you do this hard work how do you do all this demanding almost suffocating work because it's 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 not pretty digging through the things that you have done in your life taking an honest look it might not look all pink and beautiful however once you do that work you are gonna receive tremendous benefits so sit down forget about the marriage of your sister forget about your short talk and disagreements with who did we say did we call it Adam yeah we did call it Adam I called you Emma okay so forget about the promotion at the work and then really have an honest talk with Emma who is Emma write it down speak it out loud and then once you know who is Emma how she leads her life what is her non-negotiables what is her mm, what is her rules to go through life then you will understand all the holes at work maybe you are doing something that doesn't even serve your purpose maybe you don't even know your purpose so all these things are very important in order to be able to handle the other problems of life this is my my two cents about the situation of course we can say more and do more but up until you get to the place in which you know who you are you will not be able to have a smooth flawless or frictionless life and don't get me wrong when when you know who you are life is still full of problems and troubles but then you will know exactly how to go through them and maybe one day you will be grateful for all these problems because if it wasn't for all these quote-unquote problems you would never get to know who you are you know life is comfortably numb it hurts but not that much so I'm glad life pushed you in a place in which you had to go out and seek something that is outside of your comfort zone and let me tell you right at the end of the comfort zone there's an Emma waiting there for you to hold your hand and then to 
take this journey with you. So first and foremost, relax. You are on the right path. And look at all these issues, the disagreements, the problems as a as a turnkey. It's like, okay, there is a problem here and then I have to do something about it. So all these problems are actually directing you towards the direction that your heart wants to go. So anytime next time you run through a challenge a problem maybe the different perspective will be oh wow there's another chance for me to really get to learn about myself because when you are happy there's nothing to learn it's it's like a torpedo a positive feedback for a torpedo you know a torpedo going towards the target when the torpedo is positive feedback it doesn't have to do anything it just needs to keep going but then when the torpedo has a negative feedback, then it has to change course and realign and readjust. So look at all the negative feedback that you receive from others and from your own feelings as a way to change the course. And then when you change the course, when you are headed towards the right direction, right target, then you, you will find more meaning. And as you are getting closer to your goal, you will even find true happiness. Happiness is the product of you getting closer to where you want to be. Not necessarily being there, but getting closer to there. So my, my biggest advice for you is that use all these challenges or the problems as, as a new message for you to redirect your course. And in order for you to redirect your course, you have to notice from which point you are thinking. And in order to understand from which point you are thinking, you have to dig through the things that you believe. So what do you really believe? What is a life? Like you have to sit down and really maybe as if it's a college or like a PhD dissertation, you have to write what is a life worth living for Emma? Not the standards of your uh, college friends, not the standards of the society, not the standards of your early authority figures or your boyfriend or your ex or this or that, but you have to write it down for yourself. What is a life worth living for Emma? And for everybody else who is listening to this, you have to come up with your own strategy to go through life. My strategy to go through life might not work for you, but it works for me because I know who I am. So you have to sit down with yourself and then answer that question, what is a life worth living? 